Hey dudes, and welcome back to the Bants. As always, I am your host, the Bants. And here we are. Hope you guys are enjoying your Friday. It's finally the end of the week. And before, of course, we move into the weekend, it is time for our second and final what's happening in fashion for the week. So let's just get right into it. And first up, as per usual, we have our headlines for the day. And first up, let's talk about one of the weirdest Supreme lawsuits that I've personally heard about in a while, shall we? So this case involves two separate brands here. We have obviously Supreme on one side and another brand going by Supreme Italy on the other. Now, what is Supreme Italy, you might be asking? Well, it's really just a knockoff slash cheap counterfeit ripoff, whatever you want to call it, of Supreme because that's all they sell is just fake Supreme. And at the beginning of the year, Supreme finally decided to throw a lawsuit at Supreme Italy, basically saying that they were tired of seeing this brand steal their ideas and their designs in the same way that Supreme steals everybody else's ideas and designs. And what this led to was not only the closure of three different Supreme Italy websites, but the seizure of over 3,000 pieces of clothing as well. But now, already this late into the year, we finally have the first part of this case come to a close and the Italian courts actually ruled in favor of Supreme Italy and basically the courts justification of this is based on some certain regulations that even if there is a semblance of confusion or even an external similarity between two different brands, it still doesn't necessarily count as counterfeiting. And if you are kind of scratching your head thinking about that, seeing is that it sounds pretty dumb, yeah, it's pretty fucking dumb. Because not only does that mean that Supreme Italy will now be getting back their 3,000 seized items of apparel, but they will also be allowed to open up those three websites as well, meaning that they'll be able to sell these goods once again pretty much all over Europe and the world if possible. And as somebody who is really, really not the biggest fan of Supreme, I still have to say that Supreme got utterly fucking screwed here. Like I am by no means a master of Italian law or rules or regulations, but the fact that the confusion of two different brands mixed with the similarities of external product doesn't count as counterfeiting really just kind of sounds like bullshit to me. But hey, there is somewhat of a silver lining to this. There still are two other parts to this lawsuit that Supreme still has a chance to win. So this may or may not be the last time we hear about this, but either way, definitely a huge blow to Supreme here. And who knows how this will cause ripples in the counterfeiting game for not only Supreme, but other brands for years to come. Then in our second headline of the day, Comde Garçon's newest brand, their online exclusive CDG collection, finally showed off their second season, their fall winter 2018 collection. And man, it is still really, really fucking bad. Now I will say that first up, the outerwear pieces, Definitely a whole lot better than what we saw last season. Although there's a really only just a handful of them and even on regular Colm de Garçon standards, they're still only just somewhat decent. But then when we get to the rest of this collection, oh fuck God, this is just such utter trash. You know, for a brand, a collective of lines that has always been super proud of the amount of creativity and originality that it's had, I gotta say that this CDG line makes fucking play look like home plus in design compared to this shit. Like the lazy graphics and the terrible designs and literally just the lack of enthusiasm or any semblance of the design that went into this collection is just so 
fucking awful. Like when I look at these two seasons, I really just can't tell you what Ray and Adrian were going for. It just kind of seems like they wanted to take a specific style type and what they decided to go with was that European Ray revival style that really was just a flash in the pan because I'm not really seeing it anymore, are you? So they take this style and after seeing what Gosh has done with his line, because remember, Gosh Rubchinsky is underneath the Comme des Garçons umbrella, and see how he's been able to just do the same shit over and over and over and over, and even to this point still doing the same shit, and thought to themselves, hey, we could probably do that too. But as I've explained many times before on this channel, especially when talking about Gosha, is that even though, yes, he's doing the same shit, there's always somewhat of an idea of freshness in there. Nothing ever really feels the same, even though this style is technically in and of itself the same. And it just turns out that CDG cannot do that with this brand because this is only the second season and I am already beyond bored with it. And that's not even covering just how shit I feel like the designs are in general. So if there's just one thing I could say to kind of just conclude this story, one thing I could just say to anyone out there at CDG who might be watching this, really should have stuck with Ganryu, huh? Alright, and now with the headlines done, let's move on to our art stories for the day. And first up, Ai Weiwei showed off some of his newest pieces from his upcoming exhibition. So if you're a fan of the guy and want to see some of the artist's newest sculptures, definitely worth checking this out. Then Sam Richwood showed off some of his newest pieces, and these are just beautiful. Just super intricate details mixed with some very nice use of contrast. If any of that sounds interesting to you or you find yourself a fan of imaginary landscapes, definitely look into these as well. And lastly, and continuing with this surrealism that we've been talking about pretty much in every video for the last two weeks, Hannah Yata showed off some of her newest paintings and these are just once again incredible. We have some very nice detail, some very nice use of color, and just some really beautiful ideas mixed in here as well. So once again, if you're a fan of surrealism definitely worth checking out these as well too okay and now moving back into our fashion section for the day first up diamond supply co showed off their newest collaboration this time with legendary manga and anime astro boy and honestly I think they did a pretty decent job with it. There are actually a decent amount of pieces in this collection in both apparel and accessories. We're not just seeing t-shirts and long sleeves, we're also seeing pullovers, a range of socks, and even a skateboard deck, which is really cool in my opinion. And even better still than the selection is the graphics themselves. I don't know who decided to do these, but whoever did actually put a lot of time and effort into them and actually made Astro look pretty cool here, which I gotta say, compared to a lot of other collaborations I've seen lately, this is very well done. So with all that said, once again, if you are looking for a nice couple new streetwear pieces, especially if you're a fan of this style or of Astro in general, feel free to definitely check this out. And if you are looking for some other Astro Boy collabs that I think were personally very well done, make sure to check out the Bait collaboration that came out a long time ago as well. There's still actually a ton of pieces of that still lying around. So there you go. Then the 100 showed off their fall winter 2018 lookbook and do I even have to say it? Of course it's fucking terrible. You know, it's really kind of funny. Every single time I look over a the 100's lookbook, it always just kind of comes into my mind like how the fuck are they still here? And never has this idea ever rang truer than now, because as some of you might have seen a couple weeks ago, when Bobby Hundreds, one of the creators of the Hundreds, put up an Instagram post talking about kind of all the different complaints and statements and bitching and moaning he's gotten over the years now that the brand is in its 15th year of production. 
Newsflash, Bobby, just because you don't agree with somebody's sentiment doesn't make it any less true. I mean, half the things that he puts in this statement, in this Instagram post, are actually pretty valid points. The most valid of all, the two points he put at the end, the heard it all, listen to no one, because you can definitely tell by looking at this brand that he's never listened to anyone with a modicum of creativity whatsoever. So for those of you out there who want to waste some time just looking at this lookbook because I don't know, maybe you fucking hate yourself and want to punish yourself, or maybe you want to use it as a guide as to know what not to design when making streetwear, then by all means, waste your time and check this out. And to Bobby, I do have to say congratulations on 15 years. Hopefully in another 15 years, you'll be able to actually make some clothes that people actually enjoy wearing for once. And the lastly, Engineered Garments showed off their spring summer 2019 lookbook, and just a really fantastic job overall. For those of there out there who really enjoy the engineered garment style, that more mature contemporary menswear, and in this case some women's wear as well, mixed in with some really interesting functionality, some little technical details here and there, well then, really good news. This collection is pretty much everything you're hoping for. This collection is definitely much more on the longer side and even so is still filled with so many unique and creative and original details which of course is something that only a handful of brands including Engineer Garments can really pull off. We see some very nice uses of color as well as patterns and all over prints and even even though they are there and they are a little bit on the loud side, nothing feels overly loud, overly maximalized. Everything almost feels toned down, which is crazy when you kind of realize exactly how much is going on in some of these outfits. There is of course some very interesting design elements here and there, whether it be a patchwork idea or maybe a technical idea and I do have to give a shout out specifically to some of the hats in this collection which I think are just absolutely phenomenal and lastly and in my opinion the most important and star of the show here is some of these silhouettes and some of these pieces combined with the layering in some of these outfits as well I mean just Engineered Garments does a phenomenal job here, really just mixing and matching pieces, adding colors sporadically here and there, and even in the outfits where you see multiple uses of the same color, when you put them all together and just layer them correctly, it really just is such a beautiful sight to behold. So once again, just another amazing job well done to Engineered Garments here. If you're a fan of anything I just said, definitely check this out. And if you are interested in ever going into fashion design, especially more contemporary designs, definitely check this out as well. Some really interesting concepts in here and definitely a nice blueprint for what all contemporary pretty much menswear should be. And finally, let's move on to our articles for the day. And first up, High Stability put out a nice little overview slash history of on Eddie Sleman, obviously of Yves Saint Laurent fame originally, even though he was at Dior before that, and now currently the creative director at Celine. Going over once again his history, some of his hobbies, some of the, his other creative aspects, and if you're interested in learning a little bit more about him, then definitely check this out. Then Heddles once again did another little history of, this time the history of backpacks. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more on the history of the accessory or just history of fashion in general, definitely give this a read. And lastly, Marketing Week put out a very interesting article on Patagonia talking about some of their beliefs, some of their ideas, some of their activism, and some of their thoughts on all these brands trying to convert into more ethical, more 
moral and more environmental ideologies and whether or not these will in fact work or whether or not the companies themselves are even actually trying for it. Really, if this idea is your cup of tea, the more ethic or environmental sides of fashion, then definitely read this article. Very insightful and pretty eye-opening if you didn't know a lot about Patagonia before. All right, guys, and with that, we reach the end of our second and final whiff for the week. As always, I hope you guys have enjoyed. And also, as always, if you want to read any of the articles I talked about today or see any photos I wasn't able to include, I've linked all the articles I talked about in the description down below. And if you are new here, then welcome to the channel. We do these What's Happening in Fashion videos twice a week at the beginning and end of the week, plus another occasional video here and there. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, if you just have any questions or comments or concerns, or even just want to talk fashion in general, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I am always willing to talk fashion. And thank you guys once again for watching these videos and supporting my content. I hope you all have a great weekend ahead of you and as always until next time